Okay, well, in um, first of all, how much easier is your job when the team's winning and, and scoring goals like they are at the moment? Um, yeah, yeah, it's easier, um, but it's the same job really. You know, we work on the pitch, and we um, we've been working in a way for a while now to try and improve and get better. And I think it's it's just more satisfying when you see the product of the work on the pitch. Um, so yeah, but you know, everybody feels a little better after after some wins. But you know, I think we just have to keep a focus on why we're winning and and keep keep working with that. Do you do the same things in the sense that you often hear managers and players saying after a, a defeat, they say, oh, we watched the video back, we watched the video back to see where we'd gone wrong. Do you still analyse to the same extent with the players, regardless of whether you've won 4 nil away from home or whether you've lost lost a game? Yeah, 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 just as detailed. Um, but we try to obviously see the things that we've discussed that worked Um and still areas, you know, we can't get comfortable. There's still areas that we can be better at, uh, areas that we know if we keep being successful like this, teams will try and stop us and then try and predict, OK, what's going to happen next. So, um, yeah, we, we analyse it just as, as deeply, really. Yeah, I, I wonder how much of the other night pleased you, just thinking that, you know, right from the off, uh, you were at it and created what? I, I lost count, four or five chances, I think, in the first 10 minutes. And still, at the end, you were going at, at the same sort of rate. That it, it was, a, it felt pretty relentless the other night. You're, you're, the way you were playing, not just in attack, but you know, in, in terms of the midfield and defence as well. Everybody was on it, it seemed for the full ninety minutes, which hasn't always been the case. I wonder how much that that's pleased you that that you start to see performances like that lately. Absolutely, uh, like you say, I thought it was relentless from minute one. We created chances, and and we were still eighty nine minutes four nil up. Woods is pressing. You know, uh, in their back line, winning tackles, and we're trying to get five. And um, yeah, we, we need to be like that. But what it gives us is a reference point of this is how we want to play. We want to be, you know, we said it, want to be aggressive, offensive. We want to be brave with the ball. I thought we were all those things, um, and we were all those things for full 90. So then we have a reference point. There'll be days where we intend to do that and it doesn't work exactly how we want. But then we go back to, how can we get back to where we want to be? So I think it's really good to have a, a performance like that because it gives us all a kind of a clear reference point on this is what we want and this is how it should be. And actually, the, the number of goals you're scoring, um, uh, there's a very real real point in, in the league table as to the importance of that. You've massively improved the goal difference over the last week, which, given how tight the table is, is effectively an extra point, isn't it? Yeah, um, I haven't paid so much thought to that really because it's just you know we try to win the game first and and uh, play well and that's like you know three points is the most important really in terms of uh, the output at the end but then we've got the goals that come with it are an added bonus you know the fact that we're, we're taking the chances but the most important thing I think is that we try to to perform like this every week and, and keep creating the chances and then we give ourselves the opportunity to score those goals. Yeah, we are at that stage of the season, though, where everybody is looking at the league table. They're also looking at the, the opposition who you've got. And over the next few days, it's two teams who have got designs on where you are in the table. So these become enormously important games. Do you have to kind of say things to the players to make sure that their focus remains the same in these games, despite there being so much at stake in that sense? I think the focus has been good. Um, even a few games before, you know, we beat Sutton when we, I think about the Torquay game. You know we were outstanding for that for that game, um, but we you know we didn't maybe we could have been three or four up in that game, but we didn't quite get those chances and and then that can happen in football. Um, but I think the focus has been really good. You know since then it's certainly the last three games. You know from Sutton onwards the the focus has been very good. So I don't think the players need to know how uh, important the games are and and. The, where the other teams are in the league table, I think they're totally aware of of how far, and I think the focus and the intensity with which we've played has been there. So I think they just know they need to maintain that now. Do you think it changes the fact that you've scored so many goals over the last week and you've, you've won these three games? Does it, in a, in a way, change how teams view you when they're about to, to play you? I think that they know, like, if they've seen us, certainly since I came in and after a few games, they could see that we're a team that wants to, to pass the ball and wants to to uh, build play and, and try to control the game with the ball. I think that 
before, when we were not in a good vein of form, teams always fancied that they might get something against us because that's the momentum of the situation that we're in. But now all of a sudden, you know, we have the opposite momentum where we, we feel like we're going to score with every attack. So teams may be, they'll probably set up the same way, but they might not believe just as much and, and we believe in a little bit more now. So, um, you know, hopefully that gives us the momentum in the game in the key moments. The old cliche at this stage of the season is that the games are like cup finals and you look at, at the games like this for, for Bromley, who you've, you've got to play twice, of course, and then Wrexham um, in, in, in midweek as well. For them, they know they've they've got to beat you. You're the ones to beat. You're the ones in in the playoff position at the minute. What what does that do for the for the dynamic of a game when it sort of so much drives on it in that in that way? I think we just approach the game like we we do any of the other games. You know, we we uh, we research the opposition, we analyse them, we we look for weaknesses, we try to highlight our strengths and and go and win the game. And and you know, it's up for them to come here and and try and beat us for sure. But you know, we, we, we're confident in what we're doing now. I think the players understand, you know, certainly what I want from them in terms of how I want the game and how I want us to play. And I think they, they believe in that. They, they're all on the same page for that. So, you know, it's teams, like, like you say, the teams that are below us in the league need to come here and they need to get a result. But so do we. We, we, we want to win the game and we just, I do it exactly the same as have done all the others. You know, I'll research... Bromley, we'll look at the tactics and we'll look at exactly how we think we can beat them and then we'll attack it on, on Saturday again. Just finally, I'd like to ask you about the, the fact that you're sharing the goals around so much at the moment. I mean, seeing a player who hasn't scored all season get a hat-trick was the, the icing of the cake on, on the cake, of course, but you've got, I think, five, five different goal scorers in the last few games. How important is that for you that, you know, there isn't just a, a single threat, there's threats across the pitch for you at the moment? Really important. You know, we talked about it that the amount of players that we need to to be positive and break lines in the final third to get into the box and you know we've pushed to be way more aggressive with our runs forward and way more positive with the way in which we play and i think the players have responded but then that puts a lot of players in goal scoring opportunities so uh, one thing i'll say is obviously we've got Carl Wooten who's the center forward um and he's doing an unbelievable job unbelievable job in terms of leading the line holding the ball up bringing others into play and maybe as a goal scorer, normally you get the praise for the goals that you score, but actually the job he's doing for the team is allowing space for Ruben, allowing space for Jim O'Brien and all the others to, to get goals. So it's individuals are scoring the goals, but it's quite a collective. I, th I think most of the goals we've scored are a result of team, you know, the whole team being engaged in what we're trying to do. Great stuff, Ed. Thank you again. I'll stop recording there. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, great. Good afternoon, Amy. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Very well. Good. Um, yeah, without this meaning to sound like an obvious question, but it seemed like before this uh, run of three victories, it seems as though you were satisfied with the performances, but the results weren't quite matching up with that. I bet it's a, a welcome relief that now you kind of like have that correlation and momentum building there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes pe people think you're mad if you say that you've played well when you've lost. Um, but, you know, we had games where I felt like we were far superior. Um Solio Moore's away for, for most of the game with a team that creates all the biggest chances. Same away at Eastley. Um, but when you don't take those and they nick, nick a goal on the first shot, suddenly the, the game is perceived to be a disaster. But, you know, they, they, they weren't. I saw the progress. I saw the amount of chances that we were creating and the fact that normally we would win those games. So I think it's just nice that I think the players deserve the wins that they've had. They've worked extremely hard and they've shown progress and and I feel like this is a result of that progress. So, but you know, it's three games, and it, I said before, it's you know, we don't want to be. I wasn't so down in the dumps when we lost three. I'm not so over excited when we've won three. I think we just have to keep focusing on the hard work. It's it's going to take to to keep getting the results for the rest of the season. Hmm. And yeah, I was going to say just on the uh, performance as well. I guess that can work the other way because I heard the um, the post match interview you did after the Barnet game where you felt like you know you could have put them to the sword even more and you wanted more despite that being a four one win. Yeah, yeah, I did. I, I felt like at times in the first half we were a little bit sloppy with the ball. Um, we could have been better, more intense. But then I, I saw all those things that we talked about, I saw it on the Tuesday against Maiden and I thought the players responded well. But what I liked was we came into the dressing room having won four one against Barnet. And we weren't celebrating. We, we we were saying, great, but 
we can be better. And I think that's a good place to be in that we kind of demand those standards. And, and I remember you saying it before, I think it was um, after, a, after a draw or something, that it wasn't so much the intensity or the work rate from the players um, that might have affected the results, but it was just that desire in both boxes, that final product. Is that, has, has that really been the key to you know, translating these performances into results now? Yeah, I think we've gone forward with a little bit more purpose and belief. Um, you know, we feel like we're creating the chances now and we're starting to believe we'll put them away. And I think the we were putting ourselves in positions, even against Eastleigh, for example, we have three, four big chances in the first half. But I felt like that kind of belief and that ruthlessness inside the box wasn't quite there. But I feel like we've started to, to get that a little bit. Um, so, yeah, we need to maintain that. And is it something that you've seen at the other end of the pitch as well when, you know, just defending and clearing it as you know when push comes to shoving you need to just get it out a little bit calmer to be honest we're, we're calmer yeah. and a bit more focused on when we don't have the ball we're not we, it's not uh chasing to to chase them about and lose our structure we, we stay in our shape a little bit better um and when the set pieces against have come we've been um well focused and, and quite calm to defend them um but you know bromley are very strong team physically, very strong team in the air. So we're certainly going to have to be on it from that perspective in the in the next game. Yeah, I was going to say they're the main threats that you're you're expecting from the test of the weekend. Yeah, I mean they haven't conceded a goal for three games. They've been defensively very resolute, um, very well organised, difficult to break down, very physical. So you know, not an easy game at all. I think they're in a good vein of form. So you know, we've got to be be really aware of their threats um, but at the same time you know we've got to look at the things we've done well and just keep pushing that and and I think they're, they're there or thereabouts with you guys aren't they I mean just how much would a win do for you know not just Mar, but you know to really grab that opportunity of, of not nailing down because of course there's still a lot of football to be yeah. played but really you know putting a, really laying down a marker to the rest of the league to be like right one of these players spots is ours yeah, I think it would. Um, you know, we're obviously playing three of the four games. We play teams teams around us, so you know that, that's why it's important for that to to put a marker down. But we know, you know, it all starts with how we apply ourselves in the game. So you know, we just focus on that for now, and and you know that that should hopefully lead to to a good performance, and then hopefully a good result. Absolutely, and and, and just finally, I want to just uh, finish on talking about uh, one of the players that we've just spoke to. We just spoke to uh, Adam Chickson. Um, of course, he's been he's been a regular um, under you since you've come in. I'm just wondering what um, what qualities about Chickson specifically that have really caught your eye and what you like about him, what he brings to the team from your perspective. I'd say when I came in, the first thing that um, that I noticed with him was his application in training. I'd looked at the games before and he hadn't been involved so much, yet I saw a real desire, hunger, and um, a real good mentality out on the training pitch. And then he's had his chance and he's. Certainly when he's played left of a back three, he's been very calm with the ball, composed, which helps us in our build-up. Um, and, you know, he's an intelligent football player. Um, he sees the game and, and um, I think he's been excellent, you know. Um, he's come in and he's played, whether it's left wing back or left of a three, I think he's performed extremely well. And, and yeah, he's had he's had a bit of a, an unusual journey in the past couple of years. So of course he had a lot of time um, out of football, and then he's come to Notts County, didn't quite find his feet to begin with. But it's now, like you say, he's got that desire application. He's impressed you, and, and it's so refreshing as well to hear him speak so openly and honestly about you know his journey in football and some of the struggles that he did. Say so he strikes us as a really a really like honest guy and someone that the young players he says he has good dialogue with him and someone that the young players can learn a lot from going forward. Ah, oh, he's a fantastic lad, really is. Um... Great mentality, great attitude, honest lad, uh, works hard, you know, a good ambassador for the football club and is, is performing well. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, it's not only him, we have some really good characters in the group. I mean that, like, as a group to work with, they're excellent and they're hungry. They, they really are to, to be better and, and to try and win football games. So I think the, the attitude in the camp has, has been good since I've been here. Um, and, and, you know, certainly Adam Chickson's one of those that is is push, pushing good culture within the club.